Ah, uh, okay. Should I start over? Yeah, I'm gonna start over. Okay. My mother found a rabid dog and wanted to hug it, wanted to give it all her glorious honey love. But the dog didn't want kids. The dog would scream it in the hallway at 4 a.m., reminding us as often as possible, maybe being unwanted makes you stronger. I thought as a seven-year-old, oh, how the monster would panic into my body. Lay your head down, lay your head down. There are songwriters that are so good at craft and the art of it, and there are songwriters where the songs almost like burn out of them, like they just, they're gonna explode unless they write, and I feel like that's sort of, I'm in that camp, and, um, and that started at such a young age. There's a lot of turmoil and trauma in my past, and I started writing music when I was like three or four, almost as a means of survival. I was uh, sexually abused by my father, and then um, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder around my teens. And I started, I started writing songs as sort of like a comfort to myself. Every morning it's the same thing. My mom was a singer-songwriter. That's how she channeled her pain and her turmoil. So I kind of understood the effect that having that outlet could have. You have a moment where you are on a soapbox and you have the ability to command the room. How are you going to change someone's life? I want someone to be moved, whether it's in joy or being present in their grief. The spoken word community is so uh, tight and loving and communal, and that's how I met Macklemore. That's how all of you know all of my good fortune and whirlwind came from. And so I wouldn't, it wouldn't exist. I wouldn't be able to do what I do um, without being from here. Even if I try, even if I wanted to, I can't even if I try, even if I wanted to. Originally, my plan was to go to Cornish and get my bachelor's, and then um, I planned on being a middle school music teacher, a high school music teacher. As I was applying to graduate schools, I was like, you know what, I. I've never released an album, I've never really tried, you know, I've never put all my chips in and really bet on myself, you know. What would happen if I bet on myself? Before I recorded the album, I was still really active in spoken word and I had a friend, uh, Hollis Wongware, She's an amazing connector, an amazing artist. She just reached out to me out of the blue, and she's like, hey, do you want to write a song with Macklemore? I was like, sure. <laughs> like, why? Why me? I was exploring the intersectionality of being a Christian and being a lesbian in my poetry, and I think, you know, it resonated and um, made sense, I guess. You know, my goal is to really be subversive in pop music and so like sneak things in where people are having a great time and not realizing that maybe it might be thought provoking in some ways. I could have stayed. I called it bold because I was talking to someone that was helping me do my radio campaign and I was like, this is what I want to do and I want to do it independently. She's like, this is really bold. It just, that word just stuck with me and I just thought it was it was like a perfect embodiment of this collection. Um, 
a connection. I want, I want someone to be connected, whether it's to me or to themselves or to the world. Shame is an ocean I swim across. Sometimes I call it drowning. Sometimes I call it Moses. Sometimes I sway to its murky dirge. Sometimes I win and cut off its crest with a pink machete. Sometimes I want to f*** it and marry it and kill it all at the same time. But all the time, I am forgiven. Mm -hmm.